This is Kelly Clarkson. You're watching iHollywood TV. Happy Halloween, y'all. Welcome to our big Halloween show. Look at me. Oh, I'm Mad Hatter. I'm Johnny Depp's character yet once again because I love Johnny Depp that much. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm just in love with this look and I look completely different. And we have a really good show for you today. So I hope you all will stay tuned and watch the entire program. The Ochoa Boys, they are here. Yes, I love them. They're amazing. Carter Osterhouse and Tanya Nyack from ABC's The Great Halloween Fright Fight. They're also here. And we have a visit from crafting expert Lynn Lilly. I love Lynn. She's amazing. And also party planner Renee Reinhardt. Yes, she's going to give us some party planning ideas for the big Halloween day. Plus, Nolan Barton, he's going to stop by with Oscar the Grouch. You don't want to miss that as he's also celebrating Halloween with us. Curly Childhouse, yeah, she's breaking down America's top favorite Halloween candies and a look inside Spirit Halloween's fundraiser, Spirit of Children. But first, let's get to our first guest. She has a brand new book out titled The Boo Crew Needs You, now available to purchase today that will sure get your kiddos in the Halloween spirit. Please welcome Vicki Fang. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Noah. How are you? I'm doing great. Oh my goodness. I'm burning up in this outfit, but I am <laughs> loving it. You look fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. And so do you. Look at you all, your kitty cat self, you. Uh huh. Well, Vicky, let's go ahead and get started. So, first off, this Halloween, three adorable monsters, they're preparing for the monster ball, but things keep going wrong. Oh, it wouldn't be a great book if things didn't go wrong. So, Vicky, tell us more about the story and why you wanted to write this specific book. Sure. The Boo Crew Needs You is a picture book and it's interactive, um, which means the you, the reader has to interact with the book throughout yeah. every page. So basically, it's a book about teamwork. These three monsters are working together to save Halloween and the reader is part of that team, too. So they have to go through the book. So here you have to tip the book to make the car go yeah. or you clap hands to cheer them on. Um, and so or blow out the candle. Has... <laughs> yeah, blow out the candle, shout yes. So every page has an action on it. So little readers will be sure to be engaged as they read. Now, Vicki, what made you want to make this book a very interactive book for young kids, you know, to engage with all the characters? Yeah, well, I have two young kids myself and they love Halloween and they have always liked the interactive books. It makes reading time really fun. And I love reading with them as a parent to get to sit there and do stuff with them. So when they get to interact with the book, it really pulls them in and makes them excited about the book. So that's what I wanted to do. I love that. Now, out of all the characters that, you know, we meet and read in this, you know, Halloween book, which one is your favorite and why? If you can choose one, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, so the characters are Luna the ghost, Bones the skeleton, and Fang the vampire. And since my last name is Fang, I secretly have <laughs> a little crush on Fang. He's the awesome vampire in the front here. Cute. I love it. They're all cute, but I love Fang too. Mm -hmm. He's my favorite. Now <laughs> tell me, Vicki, what is one of your favorite things about Halloween as we're talking about all of our favorites? I love going trick-or-treating with my kids. It is so much fun to watch them run around the neighborhood. And for years, I didn't get dressed up for Halloween. But now that I have kids again, every year we go all out. So it's a lot of fun. Now, has your kids decided what they want to be for Halloween this year, Vicki? Well, they have decided that they want to be ghosts and ghouls. So they're Ooh. getting a little older. They want to be scary and cool. So <laughs> that's yeah. what they're going for. Maybe they'll go as Mad Hatter, you know, one day. Vicky, yeah, maybe. maybe. Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put them in touch with my makeup artist. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to set aside a long time to get ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Kids, you will sit in a seat for two hours. That's right. You know, <laughs> now, Vicki, I hear you have a fun craft that you want to do with our audience. Uh, it, it's about turning a lollipop into a ghost. Oh, that's yes. fun. Kids would love that. <laughs> so this one's really easy and fun to do with little kids. So uh -huh. all you need is 
a lollipop. Mm, oh, I love a gum gum. A tissue, um, a ribbon and a marker. So all you do is you put, oh, I've never done this with cat paws. Let's see if I can do this. You just put the tissue on top like this and pinch it under. Look at that. And then you tie a string around underneath so the lollipop. Cool. And, and so then easy for markers. like four year olds to do this. Yes, this one's a really easy one. Um, you get a marker to do the face. Make a creepy face, Vicky. Ooh. <laughs> okay, just for you, a creepy face. Uh huh. Maybe put some oh, eyebrows on them too. <laughs> and there you go. There's your lollipop ghost. So really fast, oh, and easy, it. and fun for kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to go pick up a copy of the Boo Crew Need You. It's now available to purchase online from Amazon, Target, Walmart, wherever you like to purchase your books today, you guys. You can go pick up a copy. Your kids will love this. Give them give them this book as a Halloween treat, and then they can make the lovely uh, ghost lollipop that Vicky just showed us right here. When we come back, we are sharing how you can get involved with Spirit Halloween with their fundraiser, Spirit of Children. Our show is just getting started more in a moment. Welcome back to our show. Well, Spirit Halloween is the destination for many of us when looking to buy a costume for Halloween. Spirit Halloween is continuing their hard work at raising money for young kids with Spirit of Children. They are bringing Halloween magic to over 150 children's hospitals throughout North America this year. Halloween celebrations at pediatric hospitals will include costume parties, trick-or-treating events, and more providing children and their families holiday fun and a sense of normalcy as these kids spend a lot of time in the hospital. So let's learn more about the fundraiser today and how Spirit of Children is bringing smiles to so many little faces. Take a look. Child life is a thing that helps take care of children and makes them smile. It keeps them happy. My name is Michelle Seibert and my family and I are from North San Diego County. My son was diagnosed with osteosarcoma. I had a tumor in my between in my skull right here. My name is Ruby Throche. I was unfortunately diagnosed with a condition known as gastroparesis, which is defined as basically in my case like a paralyzed digestive tract. So I'm unable to eat and I am completely TPN dependent, which means I receive nutrition through a central line. My name is Laura Moa. In March 1st of 2017, uh, Lily, who was two years old at the time, had a tummy ache, and I brought her into the ER. And uh, when we arrived at the ER, they found that she had a tumor. And uh, the very next day, she had an operation where the tumor was removed, and she also lost her kidney. And we began our journey here at the hospital. The Child Life Department is really important. They provide the kids with a sense of normalcy. For us, it provided a lot of resources in terms of sharing with Luke that he had cancer and giving us tips on how to best approach that. They help you through the hospital and they help you get through the shots and taking pills. They deliver you from a place where you don't want to be. Like they provide activities and even such things as conversation that help you escape from the reality of your illness or your current situation. We're able to explain to them in a childlike way so they understand exactly what's going on. But we do that through play, through preparation, through distraction during their procedures. We also do a lot of family support and sibling support. Kids with diabetes, you can get this a bear that you can just do the shots or finger bricks on and it makes your children not think they're the only one 
in the world with diabetes. From personal to emotional needs, all of them are met. When, as soon as she gets here, she already knows what to look forward to. It's very positive. She knows she has friends here. She knows that she has an opportunity to play. Despite all the stress that we have, she finds herself at home here. Spirit of Children chose Child Life because Child Life really provides all of the therapy and non-medical uh, support for kids while they're in the hospital. We support 144 partner hospitals and child life departments throughout the United States and Canada. One of the key elements of Spirit of Children, really where it started, is we brought a Halloween party into the hospital. We bring masks and crafts and arts and music. You see how the magic transcends the kids' situation. It really brings them to life and it does a lot for the parents as well. So when Luke was in the hospital, he missed out on a lot of important holidays. So the fact that Spirit of Children is there and they do the parties for the kids and they come and they provide a sense of joy and fun and excitement and they bring that into the hospital, you can almost quantify it because it's it makes such an impact on the kids. Spirit of Children is something that is so, there's no words to really encompass it. It's something that people don't realize. Similar to child life, they don't realize how important it is until you're actually in it. One of the really critical aspects of the Spirit of Children program is that 100% of the proceeds that we collect in the stores stay directly in the communities in which we operate, going to the local hospitals who are our partners. We have raised over $54 million since we began collecting donations in 2007, and our goal is to raise over $10 million this year. You know, when you donate to a hospital, you're not really sure where the money is gonna go, and having been direct, you know, beneficiaries of the Child Life Department and knowing that when you make that donation, it goes right into a child's life. It goes right to kids like our son, Luke. It will keep all the kids in the world staying happy when they're in the hospital. It keeps kids' smiles on their face. For more information, you guys, visit spiritofchildren.com. What a great little piece to watch there. Thank you so much, Spirit Halloween, for all you're doing to help our kids that are in the hospital. When we come back, the Ochoa boys will join me. Don't miss it. Welcome back to our Halloween show. Our next guest have a brand new single titled Coaster now available to listen. Please welcome the Ochoa boys, Raymond, Robert, Ryan, and Rick Ochoa here to celebrate Halloween with me. Hello, guys. What's Hello. Up? Thank you for having us. What an intro. Intro, yes. That was great. <laughs> it's nice to have you guys on the show. And by the way, I love your costumes. You guys look amazing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you. So but we got to say your setup is a lot better. We are both <laughs> definitely deep. You're, you're well, well thank you. Thanks to Hobby Lobby for all the pumpkins that we have. <laughs> That's, That's me. That's right. That. That's what uh -huh. I'm <laughs> Hobby Lobby has so much. I mean, you can get so much in that store. They even have Christmas stuff out. I'm like, what? Christmas already? I'm yeah. like, okay. Everywhere. Now, like, <laughs> ahead everywhere you go. Yeah. I know, right? Well, let's go ahead and get started, guys. So all four of you have been captivating audiences as a group since the early 2010s. Oh, the good old 2010. How did the Ochoa Boys form as a band? Like, when did you all, you know, know that you wanted to all work together in this industry, Raymond? Oh, I, oh, this, Raymond. oh, I love this. That's yeah, Raymond. That, that's I will say doing. this. That you it. are probably the first person to ever directly tell a question <laughs> to someone and make it so much easier on our end. Yeah. Fine, I guess Raymond will answer this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the leader will take over. So um, <laughs> basically how it all started was it kind of it kind of went back to when Ryan was on his Disney show. Um, he was approached. And I think this is why we always let Ryan answer this question because it's more it's more focused towards his end. But I'll answer it. Mm -hmm. Um, he was on his Disney show. Disney approached him to to do music because at the time they were they were you know doing a bunch of artists in the Disney world. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said himself, he's just he wasn't really a solo artist. He didn't want to go that route. But um, we're a very close family, and we always wanted to do something together. And our dad was a DJ for twenty five years, uh, and it kind of 
music was always just a great thing for all of us. We all enjoy the same type of music. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's why it kind of made sense at the time. And it was the right decision. We've been doing it. That's why it's lasted for so long is because we've always loved what we've been doing. Um, it started off, you know, just like a fun thing to do. And then it became, you know, just something that we stuck to. And it was now just we love it. It's literally our world. Music and acting are literally our world now. Oh, that's incredible. And you guys are crushing it. You know, you guys have been around for quite some time already right now. And also, too, you know, for the viewers watching, how would you really describe the band's style of music, Ryan? How would you describe the band? That's it's so crazy because so many people ask us like, yeah, that's like the biggest question. Well, what kind of music do you guys do? At least for, you know, people that haven't heard of us. But I just want to like kind of piggyback off of the end of your last question. It says like what you said about you've been doing this for a long time. But to us, it still feels like the beginning, which is wild <laughs> because with every new song, we're always like growing and learning and, and just growing as artists, you know, which is why when people say what, you know, what type of music and to answer your question now is like, we're just constantly growing and we're constantly, we feel like we're, um, you know, evolutionizing the industry and our music genre as we get older, because we never want to be the same and you never want to do the same type of music. Obviously like the realm of, of our party, you know, hype music, club music, fun music kind of, it's it, that's like at the core of who we are as the Ochoa boys but really like the genre is constantly changing and evolving with the industry with music in general what people are listening to at the time but uh I mean I would say the truth is at the core of who we are we are a group of brothers we love to have fun and we just love to inspire with our music whatever whatever you know beat whatever lyrics whatever we're actually putting the words and that we're putting to that as our producer likes to say the air of a beat when you know because music is just air until there's lyrics put to it but yeah i just feel like you know that at, at the core of it we're just we're a group of brothers who love to have fun and love to inspire with our music doesn't matter you know the lyrics that we actually are saying on the track and to quickly add to that um you know when we started it was kind of four brothers all doing kind of the rapping scene mm -hmm. and that's kind of what it was at the beginning but you know as you mature as artists you know we developed a singer over you know our, our album he spent mm -hmm. years training his voice then he became the singer of the group and now he strictly likes to focus on his vocals and now it's like three um rappers with a singer and that's kind of like the core of it all now three drake but, the weekend but at the same time <laughs> we're all kind of maturing we have a song on our new album where i sing we kind of co-sing together um and that's just kind of what it is it's like he said it's just all about maturing and not really want to stick ourselves into one box and say oh we're just a rap group or oh we just do r b music we like yeah. to say hey you know we're artists we kind of do what we feel and what we put our heart into and whatever comes to us at that given moment we might hear a song and it feels more of an r b type of to us and that's what we do but we don't want to really put ourselves in a box and say oh this is our genre of music we're just mm -hmm. artists who love to make music i love that i love that you guys don't just categorize you know yourselves to one specific genre you know you can kind of go a little bit you know from rap to you know pop to maybe someday country maybe you guys will do a country song you know yeah <laughs> well, <then. laughs> hey, yeah uh, to also off of the country idea i mean it's not a country song but there is a song on our last album that's been released it's called lonely road actually mm -hmm. so if you get a chance oh. to listen to it it has a full western um instrumental to it mm -hmm. um it's, there's a whole story behind that song but it has to do with the movie that raymond actually did years ago a pixar film and we were actually writing the song for the film um but uh but, we just didn't think it was ready yeah you know? but, but we, didn't, we didn't we didn't get to have it finished in time to be able to do that so we yeah. waited and we held it for a while and that song is more country uh it's more of a country western style sound which is really cool and it's Personally, it's been one of my favorites since we've recorded. Um, but yeah, that goes with the country idea that you mentioned. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, I love your music and so many fans love this new single that's out, Coaster. Uh, it makes me want to throw my hat off and start dancing. That's right. You guys released it on October 13th, the scariest day in October. Well, besides Halloween, Friday the 13th. Um, I hear it's a dynamic dance track. Talk to us about it, Rick. Well, yeah, well let's just say... I will say, being the oldest of the group, 
I've been waiting <laughs> for these moments. This, is, this song is strictly, I mean, what like they said, our music is basically, you know, it's positive, this and that, but it is called Coaster, which involves drinking and alcohol. So the maturity of the group of the song went to another level, you know? So at that yeah. time, this was th this era I've been waiting for, because, you know, we started, like you said, in 2010. I mean, this guy, mm -hmm. you know, he was part of, we had to rip him from the album in the chipmunks, the chipmunk group. <laughs> you know, he was really young and high pitched. He now, was actually the fourth chipmunk yeah, member, but yeah. nobody knew. He used to get FaceTime, camera time. You know? <laughs> but uh, but now that, you know, everybody's voice is developed and they're there, you know, it's like we're able to, ex another thing, evolve with different types of music and styles because we're at that age, the things we could talk about that we can do now because, you know, we're all over 21 yeah. and things like that. So. It's very, very trap, high energy. That's another thing with our music. I mean, there's some songs, we have some love songs, but if you listen to any of our music, it's very high energy. You just know that's that's Ochoa Boys, you know, good energy. Good times, good times. So um, we're excited about it. And, you know, we're, you know, and people are happy, you know, like I said, we, we've been on a hiatus for a while too. So, you know, now finally releasing these songs, people are just excited for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm excited too. Really, really great song. I cannot wait to see what's next for you guys. Now, guys, tell me about the Music Swipe app and the partnership that you have with the company, Robert. Oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you answer Yeah, that song, I would love to uh, definitely talk about this. Actually, to be honest, um, because of the Music Swipe company, um, that's actually how we got affiliated with this interview, which is really, really exciting. Um mm -hmm. So thank you for, thank you to both of you, for you guys and to Music Swipe. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we've actually discovered uh, Music Swipe um, within the past year. And uh, and it's honestly super exciting. We've already have partnered with them for multiple events um, and a lot of fun, exciting, just different um, events throughout the, throughout the almost two years now, mm -hmm. um, or a little over a year. But um, we've done like events through, you know, sports, which if you know us, you know, we love sports. So we've done sports events with them. And we've also done, obviously, Music Swipe is about discovering rising artists, yeah. um, which is a perfect fit in for us. Mm -hmm. um, so we've actually done performances through them. And we actually have a really exciting Ochoanizer. Um, if you know us, we don't really use the word fans. But uh, we call our, you know, we call them our Ochoanizers. Mm -hmm. um, we have an exciting Ochoanizer experience coming up with them uh, this week, actually. So mm -hmm. we're really excited to to be partnering with them for that as well. Big shout out to Music Swipe and thank you to them for uh, letting us do this interview. I I'm so glad that we could have you guys in costume. And, you know, I love a company that can actually help other people like artists yourselves discover other artists because it's very hard to discover people in this business when you have so many people that want to be a part of this business. So thank you to Music Swipe and we'll have all the information on how you can listen to Music Swipe artists somewhere appearing below. So somewhere down here on the screen. And uh, Ryan, you were part of R.L. Stein's Mostly Ghostly Have You Met My Ghoul Friend. Mm -hmm. oh, you said it's it right. right. You said it right. <laughs> ghoul friend. <laughs> ghoul friend. You know, I was watching that. Um, it, it probably was a couple of months ago before Halloween because I can watch Halloween movies really any time of the year. But it's a film that so many, they still watch to this day during the spooky season. I was trying to find the DVD because people, you know, rent and stream and stuff like that. I wanted to have the DVD so I could hold it up on the show. But, uh, you know, Ryan, may, you know, you might just have to sign a copy and send it right on over. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that movie. It's so good. And here's something that actually fits even more. When you watch it, there's actually a scene in the film. I was going to say, yeah, that, but, like, I was gonna say that, but hey, so it's we cool. Actually, uh, Universal actually got uh, bought one of our songs from us for the film. So one of our songs is in the movie. The fight scene when I'm yes. fighting the ghosts at the end, when I'm running through, which yes. is a cool fun fact. I'm actually running on the back lot of Universal Studios. That's where Marty McFly was flying on the hoverboard in, uh, in Back to, back to, and back to the Future. Yeah. yeah. On the yeah, it was, so that that oh. for me as a you know just as a fan of you know a film geek that was super cool just yeah. to be able to say I'm running you know we were filming on the back lot the clock tower the 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 building the structure that I ran into was the clock tower that he you know he's at the very end of the film with Doc Brown but uh, anyway so that was really cool but yes that that scene we actually have a song in the film Scare Zone which we still perform to this day it's still an <laughs> Ochoanizer favorite. But uh, on, on on another note, it was really cool and special for me. But R.L. Stein actually signed a copy of the of the of a DVD for me. 
So I have one from R.L. Stein. You have it's to keep that and treasure it forever. Oh, mm -hmm. Ryan, that's awesome. Now, how was it like to work with Bella Thorne, which was also part of the Disney era with you, you know, you know, because she was on Shake It Up with Zendaya. Fun fact, another, another, another cool thing. Bella was actually the one that referred me for the film. So to this day, I always tell everybody if they talk about that movie, which, you know, I wouldn't say sadly, you know, obviously a lot of people, you know, want to hear stories from my Carly and <clears throat> pair of kings, excuse me, but because this is a Halloween interview, dropping now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a Halloween interview, it's really cool. We get to talk about mostly ghostly. Um, that was my first film that I actually um, starred in. I was the, you know, like technically, I guess, you know, one of the main characters, me and Bella. But it was because of Bella. She had already signed on to the film and she referred me to Universal um, and the producers to basically be Max Doyle. So I owe her. Well, I said one day, Bella, I'll come back. We're going to do another movie together. And it's going to be my on my terms. <laughs> the Choa Boys, thank you so much for coming on the show. Be sure to go listen to Coaster, now streaming wherever you listen to your music. When we come back, we have a visit from Renee Reinhardt, who will share some very fun ideas for your Halloween party. Stick with us. Thank, thank you, you so Noah, much. Matt Hatter. Let's go. <laughs> Our next guest, Renee Reinhardt, is here to help us celebrate the night with a fun Halloween party for your family this holiday with our own party ideas and tips. Welcome to the show, Renee. Nice to have you on. Thank you. It's awesome to be here. Yeah, so nice to see you in costume. I love it. <laughs> I'm a busy bee, you know, getting prepared for this segment. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Renee. <laughs> so, Renee, it is so nice to have you on our Halloween show. Talk to me about what you enjoy the most about this holiday as far as being able to get creative for these special themed Halloween parties? You know, this is one time of year where we can be spooky and a little creepy and a little outside of the box. Um, I have a two year old, so I'm totally leaning into all the great kids ideas that we like to put together. And, you know, even just going to a, a adult Halloween party, all the decorations are so spooky and just, mm -hmm. you know, you're not doing this at Christmas or Thanksgiving. This is our one time of the year yeah. to be a little bit crazy. Now, Renee, talk to us about what you have on the table that will make for a perfect Halloween party this year. I have some great ideas. And these are kid and adult friendly, of course. So I put together some spider web pizzas. Ooh. And it's very easy. For this, I used English muffins. You could yeah. just use a large pizza, get dough, make it make it as you normally would a pizza. But I like the small ones because they're easier to eat, especially yeah. if you're at a party or if you want to serve these to your kid and their friends, it's, it's awesome. So English muffin pizzas, a little bit of sauce on there. And then what we did was we mm. took string cheese. Ooh, I love pizza. string cheese. Yeah. I mean, that's in everyone's fridge normally, right? So very mm. easy. We basically took the strips, made circles, on the English muffin and then cut it to be the web. And then of course you have to add your spiders. Yeah. So those are made out of black olives. Um, and we cut oh. them in half for the body and then cut that in half again for the legs and just throw them in your, oh. oven, your toaster oven. Very easy and delicious and just something to make it unique. How cool. I've been making mummy dogs for a few years now and my friends, Every year, they're like, we're coming to your house on Halloween. We want mummy dogs. So <laughs> again, it's really easy. I took a hot dog and then you get your dough, your, you know, your ready-made dough, put yeah. it in strips and wrap it around. I'll show you the finished product. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love it, Renee. <laughs> so there's Bob and Tim. Uh -huh. It's basically like pigs in a blanket, but it's mummy dogs. And you take your Pillsbury dough, you slice it in thin strips, Go one direction around the hot dog, then go around the other direction, throw them in the oven, and then add your little googly eyes that you can get anywhere. Craft store, Walmart, dollar store might have them. And they're just yeah. candy eyes that you pop on to give it, to finish the look. Now, Renee, let's talk about what you need for the mocktail because I hear it looks scary good and also is super colorful. So kids love anything spooky and, and yeah. in green, right? 
So, oh, you know they do. This is my green mocktail. You can call it Hulk juice. You could call it goblin juice. You could call it ghost <laughs> juice from, you know, like Ecto Cooler that we all used to drink, Ghostbusters. Yeah. So I put green juice in here and then I'm topping it with oh. lemon lime soda, Sprite. And then what I do is I just fill it with worms. <gasps> oh, you know, kids love that. Kids mm -hmm. love the candy worms. Garnish it. Voila, and there you have your drink, folks, to go along with your tasty, delicious, spooky food. Yeah. <laughs> and I do have one more tip. So if you have a, yeah. um, a muffin tray, or like I have a mini muffin tray here, I made ice mm -hmm. cubes in advance of the mm -hmm. juice, and then I put a worm in it. So if you <gasps> start out just like this, that way your drink is staying cold, and when they melt, the worms come out too. So. Oh, that's so creative. Look at you, Renee. Oh, you're good. Oh, the kids, <laughs> I think, definitely will like that, too. When we come back, we have a visit from crafting expert Lynn Lilly. Don't go anywhere. Thank you so much, Renee. You're welcome. Happy Halloween. Welcome back to the show. Well, it's time to scare up some creative ways to celebrate Halloween this year. Here to help is crafting expert Lynn Lilly, the founder of Craft Box Girls. Welcome, Lynn. Thanks so much for having me, and I absolutely love your costume. Well, thank you. It's exciting to see the transformation. I don't look nothing like myself, but I'm glad that you like it. Let's go ahead and get started, Lynn. So first off, how can we get the family involved in some Halloween fun this year? Well, I love to get everyone involved, whether it's decorating pumpkins, it's creating crafty costumes, or even choosing the perfect spooktacular treats. All you need is a little bit of glue, construction paper, maybe some glitter, just to get the creativity started. Nice. Now, Lynn, where's a fun place to start all the Halloween fun? Well, I love it to include our pets in the fun, and PetSmart has everything that you need to celebrate this season with your pets, including costumes under $20. From classic to spooky costumes, they have all the Halloween essentials, like this fan favorite pumpkin costume from the Thrills and Chills brand. It's available exclusively at PetSmart. There's also this hot dog and mermaid costume. It's designed to fit both cats and dogs. And get this, they even have costumes for pets like lizards or guinea pigs, like this dragon in scorpion costume. And you can't forget that you're gonna have some four-legged furry trick-or-treaters, so they've got treats as well for those little trick-or-treaters. You know, I love that the pups can go ding and dong and get the Halloween treats for themselves. That is so awesome. I might take my dog Max yes. trick-or-treating this year with Jared, who knows? Uh, yeah. Now, what are some other Halloween essentials that you can tell us about this morning? Okay, well, we know with Halloween right around the corner, our kids are gonna be eating lots of candy, so it's important to to protect their smiles from all that sugary candy. And my tip is definitely Tom's of Maine Silly Strawberry Toothpaste. And now it has a brand new look. This toothpaste helps your kids maintain their oral hygiene with a natural fruit flavor that they will love to brush with again and again. My kids absolutely love it. This fluoride toothpaste for kids uses naturally sourced calcium and silica to gently clean their teeth. It also has no artificial dyes, flavors, sweeteners, or preservatives, and it's also ADA approved. You can check it out on Amazon or tomsofmaine.com to grab it. And since my kids have been using Tom's of Maine, there is no more fighting to brush their teeth, and that's so important this time of year. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, Lynn, what is a favorite trick for making Halloween very special this year? So I have little kids, and you know, they're a little bit too young to carve pumpkins, so we like to do no carved pumpkins in our house. I pick up some craft pumpkins from the craft store, pull out the paints, the construction paper, the glue, the glitter, and let them go to town with making decorations. This is even fun for the adults. You can get really crafty and let the kids make a mess and have fun, right? Well, Lynn Lilly, it's been so nice to have you on the show. Tell us where we should go for more information about all the great things that we have discussed this morning. Yep, you can head to tipsontv.com to find out about everything I shared today. Thank you, Lynn. When we come back, Nolan Barton is here. Don't miss this.
Welcome back to the show. Well, our next guest is just getting his start in the industry with many commercials under his belt and also landing a short role in the Lifetime movie, The Suitcase Killer, alongside Candace King. He's joining me on Zoom today, dressed in costume for Halloween. Welcome, Nolan Barton. Hi, Nolan. <laughs> it's great to see you. So, Nolan, you know, you appeared in the Lifetime movie, The Suitcase Killer, uh, the Melanie McGuire story. Um, How was that experience like to have Candace King uh, play your mom? <laughs> I like that she ran me through the house. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a pretty intense scene, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Nolan, you've done a few commercials. One commercial in particular was the Camping World commercial, um, and I hear you had a really fun time doing that. How much fun was that? Good. <laughs> Hello, Oscar. Hello. Oh, I see Oscar in his little tongue. Oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. Oscar the Grouch, he loves trash, doesn't he? Oh, he's going to be eating a lot of trash this uh, Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh yeah, that that's right. Now, Nolan, Halloween's right around the corner. Are you going to be going trick or treating? Yeah. What's one of your favorite little candies that you hope to get when you trick or treat this year? Lollipops and 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 chocolate. Oh, uh, we all love chocolate, right? I love a Milky Way. Mm -hmm. Just take me to the galaxy. That, that's right. Well, Nolan, it's been so nice to have you on the show. You and Oscar the Grouch. Uh, you know, coming up next, we're going to give you an inside look at ABC's The Great mm -hmm. Halloween Fright Fight. Don't go anywhere. Thank you, Nolan and Oscar and his eyeball. That's right. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Well, a couple of days ago, I taped an interview with the host of ABC's The Great Halloween Fright Fight, Carter Osterhouse and Tanya Nyack. We had a great time talking about the show and their plans for Halloween. Take a look. Carter Osterhouse and Tanya Nyack from The Great Halloween Fright Fight. Oh my goodness. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I love the Halloween costumes for the Halloween show. Me and my big pumpkin, and I feel like a pumpkin. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh. Too much, too much. <laughs> you don't look like a pumpkin, but I hear you. I thought already started on my candy eating concept. <laughs> I know Halloween candy came out so early, like in August. I was like... I was like, what? <laughs> Halloween what? already? You know, yeah. Halloween decorations were out, like, you know, this summer. I was like... It feels so soon. Now Christmas decorations are out and Christmas movies. They're playing on TV before Halloween. I'm like, what? Oh, my goodness. Feels weird. Feels real weird. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but, you know, I'm here for it. Yes. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you guys on the show. So first off, Carter, how exciting is it to, you know, be back with the special edition of the great Halloween Fright Fight as it's been, you know, since 2014 when you guys last did this special? Yeah. So, you know, now that Tanya and I get to do it, we should each of us get to go to our own four separate homes and we get to judge. So the luxury we don't have, first off, we've done the Christmas show for what, 12 years now, 11 years. It's crazy. Forever. <laughs> and now that we're doing this show, we're by ourselves, but we don't have the luxury of, you know, hanging on to each other when we go through all these spooky haunted houses. So we have to go individually. We get sent through these haunted houses and it is petrifying. We get, I mean, I don't know about you, Tanya, but I literally fell over. I yeah, literally no, fell no. over because I got so scared <laughs> from somebody. It was so spooky, but it was awesome. I wasn't wearing this. I should have worn this. Man. Oh my gosh. Noah, can I just, I can I just piggyback off of Carter's sentence? Yes, go right ahead, my friend. <laughs> because you would think that, like, I am the biggest I, you wouldn't think this. I'm telling you this. I am the biggest chicken on the planet. And I would hope that if I was going with Carter, that I'd have this big, giant, six foot three guy there in front of me that I could like, you know, tuck behind. But the truth <laughs> is, Carter would be tucked behind me because I heard he was a <laughs> bigger chicken than me. <laughs> you I might be right that. about that. <laughs> You know, I went to a haunted house one time. They sent me to, you know, to a haunted house. I, I, it, I've never been to a haunted house. It was my one and only haunted house that I ever did. 
I was so scared with it, but uh, it, it made for good TV. People were like, oh, I love this. Uh, but, you know, in the two episodes airing on ABC, now the families, they have a chance to win a $50,000 prize in the Fright Fight Trophy. Uh, yeah. Talk to me about what viewers will see in these two episodes that will be really mind-blowing, Tanya. Well, it's a little something of a little of everything because... <laughs> I thought for sure every house was going to be scarier and scarier and scarier. Yeah. But in fact, I was caught off guard and surprised where there were some displays or um, haunts, we like to call them, that uh -huh. we showed up to. And I thought for sure I was going to be scared out of my mind, but they ended up being really fun and really playful. So you don't know what you're going to walk into. The houses all start off seeming like they're going to be super creepy, but then in the end, they might be creepy. They might be not so oh. creepy. So, they, you know, how we run to get, look at, look at Carter. I think all of <laughs> mine were scary. freaky. All of, all of mine were scary. I got spooked by a cameraman. I was so scared. <laughs> this show. Oh my god! Walking goodness. around. I was on pins and needles and I got spooked by a cameraman. I got That's so awesome. That's awesome. I hope, I hope that made it in the shot for these two episodes. Oh I hope we see goodness. that. The There's plenty of, of that, screaming and yelling in yeah. both of the episodes, I guarantee. There's a lot. There's if a lot not, more than I thought. If not, ABC, send it over to me. I'll put it in our Halloween show. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's right. <laughs> we'll put it in at the very end as fun gags and laughs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, Carter, what was something you enjoyed the most about shooting this special and really getting to learn, you know, why the families put together these incredible Halloween haunts? Yeah, I mean, I like to just go back to like me and Tanya, we, 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 because we got so scared yeah. and all that jazz. But it really is. It's about the families. You're right. It's about like these families. We've seen so much in the last decade of Christmas and how amazing yeah. it is. And that show is just like always going. It's like forever, right? And now that we've started starting to really dive into the Halloween spirit, the scary spirit, these families, like I had one kid who was 17 years old, who's a YouTube sensation, who literally just, he puts up his haunt by the money he makes from YouTube. And he's 17. So like wow. these, they've even figured out like the economics of how to make this work. And then of course, it's still a family oriented uh, haunt. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what family would want to go through some of these because I was... <laughs> forced to go through them at all I didn't want to go through them but I had to because of the show I guess I signed up for it but there were some scary ones and the families get together and they you know collaborate on what they're doing and year after year just like the Christmas show gets bigger and better mm. now Tanya how long does it actually take these families to create these Halloween haunted houses I mean when do they start you know doing all this stuff well similar to the great Christmas light fight it takes uh -huh. them months of preparation it actually takes them a full year of planning oh. and figuring out what the theme's going to be and synchronizing sometimes there's a lot of animatronics all these wild and unique things that you would never expect and mm -hmm. nor would you ever think was possible what i loved about it, it as carter was saying you know we've done the great christmas light fight for so many years now i mm -hmm. love the unique twist for years and years, I would always have to massage my cheeks because I'd be smiling so much. This time, I was like massaging my whole face from just fear and, and being so being scared. Terrified. <laughs> I would love to. I have, you know, I love watching the Great Christmas, uh, you know, Light Fight and the Halloween one as well. Way back in the day in 2014, now coming back, thank gosh, in 2023. I would love to know the power bill to these people's houses. Like what? I mean, it has to be crazy, right guys? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It, Thank it, goodness it, for LED. That's right. Thank goodness. Like updated. That's, a, that's right. More efficient lights. That's right. That, that's actually a really good, uh, great point as to why it feels different every year for Carter, Carter and I, we've been doing it over 10 years now and we have seen wow. technology change so much. So it's never, feeling like we're seeing the same thing year after year it is every year completely different there's something new and exciting and so for halloween i mean this this was a first for both of us to really really experience Sneaking. Well, be sure to catch the great Halloween Fright Fight kicking off Sunday, October 22nd at 10 p.m. on ABC. You don't want to miss out. Thank you so much, Carter and Tanya, for coming on the show. You guys look incredible. Thank you for dressing the part, too. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. <laughs>
Welcome back to the show. Well, 93% of Americans say they plan to share chocolate and candy with friends and family this Halloween season. And people who enjoy candy corn, they have some strong opinions about that particular iconic Halloween treat. Well, joining us to discuss what people consider the right way to eat it, plus learn more about other popular Halloween treats, is spokesperson for the National Confectioners Association, Carly Childhouse. Hello, Carly. So nice to have you on the Halloween show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Happy Halloween season. I'm so glad to see you are already in the spirit. Oh, you know it, but this wig, oh, it's itchy, itchy, but so much fun to dress up for Halloween and be someone different, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So what Halloween treats are people excited about this season as so many will be trick-or-treating this year with their kids? I'm so glad you asked because we did the hard research on this to figure out the perfect treats for trick-or-treaters in your neighborhood. Coming in at number one is probably no surprise. It's chocolate. People love it all year long and especially great for Halloween. Coming in at number two is gummy candy. So bold flavors and maybe some interesting shapes. We actually found that more than 60% of Americans say they're looking for treats with a creepy, spooky, scary theme. So gummy candy is perfect for that, whatever kind of creepy crawly you're thinking of. And then coming in at number three, kind of controversial, but can't deny it's iconic, is candy corn. Um, we also found out that parents are really excited about Halloween treats because 60% of parents admit that they will steal some treats from their kid's stash. And I have a feeling the other 40% might be lying. You know, Corley, I love watching the parents that steal their kids' candy on Jimmy Kimmel. You know, I find humor in it, even though it's a little bit mean. But adults love candy, too. So, you know, candy corn is such a debatable topic. But do you eat your candy corn by the color or do you eat it in full? My husband eats it by the color. That's a great question. Listen, it is a hot debate across the entire country about what is the right way to eat candy corn. I can tell you oh. what I know and what I do. 31% um, of Americans are like me. They start with that narrow white end and then go by color. 18% start on the other side with that wider yellow end. And then 51% of Americans, they just go for it and they eat that whole piece at once. I'm curious what you do if you enjoy candy corn. You know, Carly, for me, I mostly eat it in full, but if I'm watching a movie, maybe I'll eat it, you know, color by color. But that's probably pretty much how I do it, which is how everyone does it, right? You're in good <laughs> company. More than half of the country does it that way. <laughs> now, Carly, how can chocolate and candy enhance the Halloween season and other special moments throughout the year? Chocolate and candy have this really unique ability to brighten spirits and lighten moods and, as you said, mm -hmm. enhance occasions, whether that's a holiday, a celebration, or just add that little bit, bit of sweetness to every day. Of course, Halloween is what we like to call in the confectionery industry our Super Bowl. It is a moment when chocolate and candy uh, play a really big role. And Halloween is about so much more than just October 31st. People are really excited to celebrate all season long. And there are different ways to incorporate treats into that, whether you are decorating your home with some treats or enjoying chocolate and candy while you're making a costume um, or baking with some of those treats. Of course, trick-or-treating plays a large role as well, but it's really about that extended season for so many people. Fantastic. And it's always a treat to have you on the show, Corley. Thank you so much for joining us on our Halloween show. Once again, you take care and have a great and happy Halloween. Thank you so much. Same to you as well. Really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching the show today. I hope you enjoyed all the great guests. And I hope you like my costume choice this year as the Mad Hatter, Johnny Depp. I love Johnny Depp. Have a fun and safe Halloween, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>